Hey there, uh, this is Evan, the creator of Tales of Liron, and I thought I would make this video as a general character overview for all the characters that you have met so far in the story up to Chapter 5. So if you haven't read my story yet, do not watch this video. I'm going to be spoiling stuff. Go to Booksy, I will leave the link to my story and catch up, and then watch this video so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So anyway, let's go over the main outlaw group and Liron himself. So I'm going to start with Liron, the main character of this story, the protagonist, the person you're supposed to root for. Now, Liron is 16 and a half years old in this point in the story when he stumbles upon the outlaws. He was alone for three years, actually three and a half years, uh, after the genocide occurred. He was learning how to live on his own in the city, avoiding the reconnaissance of the drones, uh, learning how to shoot guns, learning how to take care of himself and fend for himself. And now he stumbled upon this group of rebels who happened to, in the past, be Alpha employees. So they actually worked for the military at one point. But they were fed up and created this group and decided to rebel against the forces that be. They did not want to be a part of the government anymore. They wanted to institutionalize a new way of thinking. Too bad we had a damn genocide take place, pretty much ruining any hope they had of instilling hope in people. But Liron survived, and now he has joined up with the group. And uh, Liron himself is a very typically energetic young man. He just wants to see action. He wants to do what he thinks is right. He's been through so much hell in his life, and he wants to make it right. He wants to bring justice to those who have caused so much harm to him, and he wants to end the corruption that he sees in this world that he lives in. Um, it can't also help that every morning he had to wake up in a destroyed city, you know, buildings with breaking down and, you know, lots and lots of destruction constantly around him. It was a horrible three and a half years for Liron. He was very isolated and felt alone. And that's why I decided to have him show emotion when he first saw Maxi, because it was the first human being he had seen in three and a half years. I mean, especially for a young person, that's going to probably trigger some sort of response. So I felt like that was appropriate. So anyway, Liron is learning about himself. Now that he's found the group, he's learning that he's actually kind of a special individual. And you're going to be learning more about Liron as the story continues. Don't worry. You will not be disappointed. Anyway, now let's talk about the outlaws themselves. Now, the outlaws are former Alpha employees that used to work for the government. They were all skilled specialists in the army. And uh, they decided to group together and left Alpha. So let's start with the patriarch of the group, Noah. Now, Noah is an extremely confident and capable leader he is the architect of the Outlaws, and he decided to make this group because he was sick of seeing the direction that Alpha was taking with its leadership. Mind you, there's a war going on overseas in this storyline. And so Noah felt like they were not only being irresponsible at home, but he wasn't necessarily agreeing with what was happening in the war. So he decided, all right, you know what? I can't support this cause anymore. So he grouped up the other outlaws, and Noah's mission was to create a group that could spread awareness about uh, Alpha's wrongdoing. Noah is, as you learned recently, a super soldier. Now, what does that mean? Well, as you can probably guess, it means that he's probably a little bit stronger than the normal person. He's a little bit more physically able. Uh, I'm not going to give away too much yet, but you will be learning about that again very soon. So just keep reading. Uh, Noah is a very intelligent leader. He likes to look at the big picture and he likes to analyze the situation. He knows where everyone is supposed to be. He calls the shots. He makes the decisions. And he knows what his team is supposed to do. And he's a very capable combatant. He's a very capable fighter. He lost his eye. He has this nice metal device on the side of his head where his eye once was. Um, you know, it's like an eye patch sort of thing, but it's made of metal. It's kind of a futuristic looking thing. And uh, he is um, about six foot six, 270 pounds. He's ripped. He's like, you know, Hercules, basically. You know, like the body every man would want and every woman craves, right? 
But uh, no, Noah is just like your typical juggernaut-looking guy. He's a, he kicks ass. He's a confident leader. He's always sure of himself. Uh, next up on the list is Maxie. Now, Maxie is a very egotistical individual. Uh, you will actually notice with my characters, I kind of made their personalities opposite to their roles a little bit, and I'll explain that with Maxie first here. Maxie is a stealth expert, an assassin. He likes to kill people from shadows and smoke screens, and he likes to really confuse people before he kills them. He's a tactician, so he goes in and he finds the opportunity to strike. But Maxie's a very egotistical individual, and he always likes to brag about his abilities. Uh, he even said to Leron, you better watch your back. You know, I'm one of the best assassins out there, so watch your back, Leron. So this is, you know, you'd usually think a guy who likes to attack from the shadows would be more quiet and uh, reserved, because maybe he likes to calculate. But no, Maxie is very in-your-face about the fact that he knows how to kill people. He knows how to kill and likes to. And uh, you're going to learn more about Maxi uh, very soon. So uh, I hope you look forward to that. Uh, next is Stuart. Now, Stuart is the brains of the operation. He's a technical genius. An absolutely brilliant programmer, um, computer worker, whatever you want to call it. He knows technology. He knows how to build weapons. He knows how to build computer programs. He knows how to hack into systems. He knows everything. And he's just, he's way more capable than anyone could even imagine being at computer stuff. So he's a very important part of the team. He keeps all of their technology going. And a lot of the gadgets that you will see the Outlaws using uh, was created by Stuart. So he's in charge of all that. Uh, next on the list, we have Mary and Sarah, the two women of the group. Now, it's actually funny because Mary and Sarah um, are kind of named after my sister, Mary Sarah. Or her first name is Mary, her middle name is Sarah, so I was like, Mary Sarah, so based on my sister. And Mary has uh, a very interesting personality to her uh, profession as well, so she is an explosives expert. Uh, she likes to use big guns. Big guns. Uh, she is a demolitions fanatic. She loves blowing things up. She likes destroying vehicles and other things. She likes using artillery guns, but she herself is quite serious and doesn't really laugh at stuff and she's not very outgoing she's pretty much focused on the mission at hand so again i'm kind of opposing the fact that she likes to blow stuff up with the fact that she's pretty pretty serious and isn't like you know oh my god i just blew someone up <laughs> no she's not like that she's uh pretty serious and on the ball when she's in action so again kind of a, a contrast there between the character the character's personality and what they actually do. And then we have Sarah, and Sarah is the medical lab rat of the group. She knows everything about human biology, science, cellular stuff, and she's going to really help uh, Leron discover who he is, and you're going to start learning about uh, the super soldiers more and the genetics behind all of it, so that's going to be kind of a cool thing, I hope. Um, and uh, she is very important to the team because you can't have a team, especially one that wants to pretty much go to war with its own government, without a medic who knows what she's doing. And, and Sarah knows what she's doing. She's one of the best doctors you can imagine. She's made technologies that can help heal people. She's done a lot of things. So you're going to learn more about Sarah as well. And uh, basically, that's the character overview. I plan to have more videos like this while you're reading so that you get a sense of the story. And you can skip them if you want, but they're kind of just here to um, maybe enlighten you a bit about what you're reading so it maybe helps you get involved with the story more. And I hope that's uh, helpful. Anyway, enjoy what you're about to read. It's going to get really good. Hope you guys enjoy.